hey, think with me a second. Have you ever been asked by a parent or an authority figure to do something that you didn't want to do? If so, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand and I want you to keep it up, all right? Have you ever been asked to do something that you didn't want to do? One, two, three, go. Okay, look around. Every hand should be up right now, except I know there's a few smart Alex in the room. Uh, you're trying to get a laugh and we all know who these guys are. Don't point at them, they don't deserve our attention. <laughs> all right, you can put your hands down. Listen, everybody gets asked by parents or authority figures to do things that they don't want to do. This still happens to me. For instance, speed limits. Most of the time, I wanna go about five or 10 over what the police officers are asking. And every couple years, I get a friendly reminder from an officer in the amount of a couple hundred dollars. Jared, slow down. It's awful. You know, my wife and I ask our two daughters to do things that they don't wanna do all the time. You see, being four and two years old, they have this infatuation with doing things that could result in their mom and I having to rush them to the ER. My two-year-old, for instance, literally has no fear. No matter how many times I tell her, Ava, no jumping off the bed. Ava, don't climb on the table. Ava, back away from the fire pit. <laughs> Ava, this is the worst one. Don't chase your sister with the sparkler. <laughs> I know, she's a little crazy. She just doesn't wanna do what her mom and I ask her to do. But I bet you weren't like that at all, were you? Wrong, of course you were like that. Now maybe you didn't chase your siblings with sparklers, but I bet in your own way, you drove whoever took care of you growing up just a little bit crazy because there's always times when we don't want to do what authority figures ask us to do. In fact, there's probably even been something even this week where you've been asked to do something that you didn't want to do. For instance, clean up your room. Don't talk to your sister like that. Don't roll your eyes at me. It's your turn to pick up the dog poop. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Give me your phone. Hand it over right now. And we can all smile about these things because it happens to all of us. But listen, how we respond in these moments when we're asked to do something that we don't want to do, how we respond makes all the difference. And the reality is, most of us struggle to respond wisely. And listen to me, students. If you could learn to respond wisely to a parent or to an authority figure in those times when they ask you to do what you don't want to do, I'm telling you, you could crush it as a teenager and you could crush it as a follower of Jesus. Did you know that God's word actually teaches that every human authority has been established by God? Every parent, Grandparent, teacher, coach, principal, governor, senator, general, president. All authority is in place because God put it there. It's no accident who God has placed in authority over your life. And as such, it matters how we respond to them. And all throughout this series, Crushing It, we've been learning godly wisdom from the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs was written by the third and wisest king of Israel named Solomon. And what's cool about this book that he wrote is that it appears that Solomon wrote this book as a father's advice to his kids. You see, Solomon wanted so badly for his kids to crush it in life. And right up front, in the very first chapter, Solomon speaks to his kids about how they should respond when they're asked by a parent to do something that they don't want to do. And listen, it's genius. Like, you guys have got to be reading your Bibles. Let me show you what Solomon said in the first chapter, Proverbs 1, verse 8. My child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. 
Now, just in case you're listening and your parent situation isn't traditional, maybe you live with grandparents or step-parents, uh, regardless of who your parent figure is, this verse applies to whoever God has placed in parental authority over you. So, my child, listen when your authority corrects you. Don't neglect your authority's instruction. I want you to notice two words that stick out in this proverb. Listen and neglect. Two words that are pretty much opposite in meaning. Let me show you. To neglect means to throw away. To neglect something is to see it as like so worthless that it might as well be in the trash can. And we can all be pretty good neglectors, can't we? And the word listen is more than just hearing something. Like, you don't have to try to hear, but listening, well, that requires effort. To listen to someone is to value who they are, and it's to value what they have to say. So you take these two words, listen and neglect, you put them together. We see that to neglect is to devalue. To listen is to add value. So let's put those definitions into the context of that moment where your parent figure is asking you to do what you don't want to do. You can either devalue who's talking or you can value who's talking. You can either devalue what's being said to you in that moment or you can add value to what's being said. Now question, which of these responses is going to lead to more consequences? Neglecting or listening? It's obvious, right? When we neglect authority, the consequences usually get worse, don't they? Because what ends up and happens is that parent figure feels disrespected. And that just fuels their fire, doesn't it? And we end up much worse off than when we started. But if we listen, that often works out better for, us, better for us in the end, doesn't it? Like not only do we usually learn when we listen, but when a parent figure feels heard, when they notice that, that we actually care about what they have to say, then they feel respected. And that's a good thing. And I know, as I'm saying all this, that probably sounds good. But let's be honest. It's easier said than done. In that moment of confrontation with a parent figure, it's so hard to listen, isn't it? It's natural to go into neglect mode. <laughs> there was this one confrontation that I had with my dad when I was in the eighth grade. I was going through this season of neglecting my parents, and I just didn't want to listen to anything that they had to say. I had my own thing going for me, and as far as I was concerned, parents were just in the way. And I wonder, does that describe maybe how you've been viewing your parents lately? That they're just in the way? Well, everything came to a head for me one evening as my dad was driving me home from practice. And the whole way home, he was reminding me of his expectations. Maybe you've been in one of these conversations. And I was not having it. I was in full-on neglect mode. And while we, we pulled into the garage and my dad finished his long list of expectations. And he finished up by saying something along the lines of, You got it? I'll never forget my response. I was looking out the car window and with as much attitude as I could muster, I said to my dad, no. And how do you think that worked out for me? Let's just say that the consequences that ensued crushed me like a bug. And no, my dad didn't physically hurt me, don't worry. But I learned my lesson. You see, consequences are great teachers but consequences can crush you. Wisdom, on the other hand, from God, is a much better teacher. And when you apply wisdom, you can crush it. Students, God, your heavenly Father, wants more than anything for you to use His wisdom to crush it 
and how you respond to authority. He wants you to use wisdom to crush it in life. And he's appointed authority over your life for good reason. Solomon says, listen to correction. And he warns us, don't neglect instruction. So how are you doing with this? Have you been saying no much more than yes? Have you been neglecting the authority that God has placed in your life? I want you to know, students, how you treat authority matters. It matters more than you realize. And it matters because how you treat authority is a reflection of how you view God. It's hard to love God and neglect authority at the same time. Why? Well, because God is your ultimate authority. And God, your heavenly Father, He looks at you and He says, Yes! Man, I love you. I value you. Like, you're perfect. And I've got a plan for you. And I've, I've taken these, these parents, and, and maybe your grandparents, or your teacher, or your coach, and I've put them in your life for a good reason. So in those moments where your authority asks you to do what you don't want to do, God wants to remind you through his word, listen, don't neglect. And for most of us, that's going to take practice. So so what we're going to do is we're going to have our student pastors on every campus uh, help coach us so that we can learn how to be better listeners. But when it's all said and done, students, I hope you'll listen well to the authority in your life, not just because it will minimize consequences, though listening will do that. I want you to listen to authority because God, He's a great listener. And get this, God never neglects you. He always listens. He values you so highly, more than you can imagine. And if we All of us, if we're going to be his followers, then we have to listen to authority because the authority in your life was put there by God and it's part of his plan. Listen, don't neglect, add value. Let's all work on that this year and together we'll crush it. 